Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, this is Orphan Last, aka Skylar Madison, and today I'm starting over with the coloring process for this image of the sci fi warrior mouse. I drew this image out about a year ago. Previously, when I colored this image, I felt as though I just needed more practice coloring until I'd go back and resume work on this image. And although I still feel as though there's room for improvement, by the end of this video, I do feel as though this is a completed image, which is a good step forward from how I felt last time. Recently, I've been noticing a number of things with my work. With the Babylon 5 fan art image that I did recently, the shadows and highlights were looking rather good, but I was never really happy with how the line work came out with the final image, and I felt the same sort of critique when looking at this week's Galaxy's Edge image, unfortunately. It's as if I'm looking at those images and admiring the painting, but the cartoony nature of the line work gets me to see some uncanny valley happening, and yet the line work looks good with the sci-fi warrior mouse. And I think the problem with my line work is just that I'm treating it too much like a traditional comic book. With most of my images and how I've done the line work and how I've done the coloring in the past, there's nothing wrong with any of that. But it's just this new approach to coloring with the gradient maps that's making my line work seem more and more out of place. The gradient map painting technique leans more towards a realistic sort of look, whereas my line work is leaning towards looking like a cartoon or a comic book. I enjoy comic book art, and I love cartoons, and clearly I have no problem drawing that sort of thing, but since I'm working digitally from the sketching phase all the way to the coloring phase, I don't need to add a thicker border around objects that are closer to the camera, especially since I'm using this gradient map coloring technique. Uh, thinking back on how I drew this sci-fi warrior mouse image, I remember tinkering with the line work in several different ways, but ultimately I kept my line work rather thin when I drew it, and when it was all said and done, all I really wound up doing with the line work if I recall correctly, I wound up lowering the opacity on the line work while I was adding the grayscale and never decided to increase the opacity. And doing a combination of working with nothing but lines and grayscale made it so that by the time that I wound up adding the gradient maps as flats and gradient shadows and gradient highlights, it made the line work blend in rather seamlessly with it at a lower opacity. Uh, at least in most instances. And I think I'm going to experiment with that more in the future. I'm thinking that with the gradient map technique with coloring an image, although you don't need to work with a grayscale image at all, grayscale does wind up making your layers panel just a bit more organized. Uh, the grayscale gives you a, a better way of making sure that all the values in the image are just right before you commit to color. And then the gradient map flats allow you to quickly lay down each color with a huge range of values right at the very beginning of the coloring process. Having a variety of gradient map flats gives you a nice selection of stencils to control click on while you're laying down your shadows and highlights as well, letting your base colors just blend in naturally with your first and secondary light sources. And since the plan all along is to refine things more and more with the gradient shadows, and gradient highlights, you want your grayscale image, if you're working with a grayscale image, to be fairly accurate with how objects react to light and shadow. But the actual light sources themselves, if they're in the canvas, I don't think you want to commit to anything with those too much. At least, right now I don't think so. Uh, if the value of a light source is too close to being white, and you want that light source to have some obnoxious lighting or something like that, obnoxious colors going on, there's really not much you can do with that, unless you want to do a heck of a lot of work in order to get it to look the way that you want it to. So I think that I'm going to nail down a technique for light sources down the road. I'm not really quite sure what I'm going to be doing with it, but I'm, I'm just going to be tinkering with it a bit more. Ultimately, what I think that I'm describing here is that I think that I've hit a roadblock with my style. I'm gravitating towards this new look, this new feel for my artwork, and it's conflicting with how I've been drawing in the past 
which means I need to evolve my style to something new, something that I think will also grab more attention as well. Otherwise, I think things will progressively become more and more uncanny if I just keep working with my old workflow and, and this new one that's kind of coming into being. One thing that I just love about this gradient map technique is that I can tweak colors throughout the entire image within seconds without having to revisit things a thousand times. I could just open up a gradient map that I've already been working with by double clicking on it on the layers panel and just tinker with the colors there uh, to just revisit things real quick and just in seconds just done. Some of the fun stuff that I experienced while revisiting this image was refining some of the work adding more dimension to the inside of the snake's mouth, playing around with the segmented lights throughout the snake's body, which I feel made him really interesting to look at. I had difficulty getting the laser blast coming from the warrior mouse to look just right, but once I figured out how to get it to look the way that I wanted, it made working with most of the other light sources far more enjoyable to work with. The only exception was the sunlight, which I placed behind the snake, and I think that I had to remake that light source there at least three separate times. But the only way to get the eye to go exactly where I wanted it to go was actually to darken most of the image to try to sell the idea that it was either daybreak as the sun comes up or nightfall as the sun goes down. Or it may possibly just be this. Oftentimes when you point a camera at a bright light source, everything starts getting kind of silhouetted. And so I think that might be something that, I don't know, that might cause that effect. Effect. I might have added like camera physics just without knowing it but in the end all of that kind of made the image look all that much more intense at least in my opinion one thing about working with grayscale is that I think it'd be a good way to add things like motion blurs without having a slew of layers all over the place and trying to get all of the layers to work together with that motion blur that that sounds like a nightmare if you had to apply a motion blur to like 50 different layers and you don't know what layers need what but that's just a theory running through my head because by the time that I wanted a motion blur surrounding the subject of the image, I had already committed to too much work on too many gradient maps. But when working grayscale, you only need to worry about your grayscale layer and your line work layer. And I'm thinking that would be faster and easier to work with those two layers alone in order to get like motion blurs and such like that. I guess I could add things like motion lines, but I kind of hate motion lines. Some artists can pull it off really well. Uh, but it's kind of like cross-hatching. Uh, it's just something that doesn't feel all that natural to me. And as a final step, I wound up creating a black and white adjustment layer, which actually converts the image back to being black and white again. I used the light slider on my HSL slider uh, to control just how much saturation I want in the image. And that's what that black and white adjustment layer does. I just desaturates things here and there as I change the value of my brush um, throughout the whole image. Okay, so let's go ahead and compare and contrast really quickly here. So here's the first draft of the image that I made a year ago. I really hate it. The laser blast looks horrible. It makes the eye confused at what the heck it's even looking at, especially as it hits the snake's mouth. The overabundance of saturation throughout the entire image makes you wonder what you're even supposed to be looking at. Everything just looks blurry. You look at the warrior mouse's hand and it's like it's just phasing out of existence and just lowers in opacity randomly at its forearm. Generally, I hate how the coloring to this image came out a year ago. And, and it was just clear to me that I just needed to refine it. I needed to refine my technique when it comes to coloring. And now here's the new version. Now, I'm not saying that it's perfect, but there's way less saturation, which makes the things that are saturated look all that more appealing. Things just don't look blurry. There's no part of any character that just feels like it's phasing out of existence or anything like that. The laser blast looks much better, the snake looks far more intimidating, and generally I think that I've come a long way in the last year. 
when it comes to coloring. Anyways guys, if you've enjoyed this content, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to get more notifications from me, or would like to participate with my community a bit more, feel free to click on the bell, follow me on Twitter, or go ahead and join me on Discord. A link to the last two are in the video description below. If you'd like to support my channel, feel free to click on the image of my mascot in the upper right corner of the screen right now. It leads to my Patreon. Any support would be much appreciated. And if you've enjoyed this content, feel free to click on anything else that's appearing on the screen right now. Thank you very much for your time.